nervous tissue, the nervous system, with its hundreds of billions of neurons forming myriad intricate and complex interconnections among themselves and with an abundance of non-nervous system cells, functions as the communications and database center of the body. This communication center is based on the presence of receptors that receive information from outside and from inside the body and convey the data to processing centers. Here the newly received information is processed and compared with information stored in the database, and responses are formulated and conveyed to effector organs to perform the requisite actions. Neurons are supported physically and metabolically by non-nervous system cells, known as neuroglia. Central nervous system, CNS, CCIH cysts of the brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system, PNs, composed of 12 pairs of cranial and 31 pairs of spinal nerves and their respective ganglia, facilitates the ability of the nervous system to perform its plethora of functions. The PNs is divided functionally into sensory, afferent, components, which perceive a stimulus and transmit it to higher centers for processing, and motor, efferent, components, which originate in either the brain or the spinal cord and transmit a motor nerve impulse to an effector organ, example skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, gland. The motor component of the nervous system is subdivided further into the somatic nervous system, serving motor impulses exclusively to skeletal muscles of the body via a single neuron. Impulses to cardiac muscle, smooth muscles, and glands via a two-neuron system with an autonomic ganglion interposed between the preganglionic neuron originating from the CNS and the postganglionic neuron originating in the autonomic ganglion. Additional neurons known as neuroglial cells serve in a supporting capacity to the impulse transmitting neurons, Fig 9.1. Development of NS Cytokines originating from the notochord stimulate ectoderm positioned above it to differentiate into neuroepithelium, which thickens into the neural plate. The margins of the thickens into neural plate. The margins of neural plate initially fold to form the neural groove and eventually fuse with each other to form the cylindrical neural tube. The brain forms from the rostral end of the neural tube, whereas the spinal cord develops from its caudal end. Other structures of the nervous system, including neuroglia, neurons, choroid plexus, and ependema, also arise from the neural tube. Arising from the right and left margins of the neural plate before their fusion, a thin strip of cells, neural crest cells, migrates away from the neural plate to give rise to the following structures, sensory ganglia and autonomic ganglia and neurons originating in them. Most of the mesenchyme and its derivatives in the head and anterior neck. Odontoblast. Melanocytes. Adrenal medulla chromaffin. Arachnoid and pia mater cells peripheral ganglia satellite cells Schwann cells because the nervous system develops early and is so complex, many abnormalities and congenital malformations may occur during embryogenesis. Spina bifida is a malformation resulting from an incomplete fusion of the neural tube in which the spinal cord and the spinal meninges may extend through the defect. Spina bifida anterior results from incompletely closed vertebrae. When severe, thoracic and abdominal viscera may be malformed. When the anterior neuropore fails to close, there is an open cranial vault with an undeveloped brain. This developmental defect is known as anencephaly and is lethal. Cortical cells that do not undergo proper migration may disrupt the normal functioning of nerve tissue called interneurons. This disruption may be responsible for epilepsy. Hirsch-Sprung's disease, or congenital megacolon, results from failure of neural crest cells to migrate into the wall of the forming distal colon. Our backs plexus of the enteric nervous system, which is responsible for innervating the distal colon, is absent, causing the colon to enlarge. Two separate groups of cells compose the nervous system. Neurons are functional nerve cells, they range in size from the smallest, 5 atm, to the largest, 150 gym, cell of the body and are responsible for conveying information to and away from the CNS. Neuroglial cells provide physical and metabolic support for the neurons. Structure and function of neurons, the typical neuron is composed of a cell body, perikaryon or soma, 
that consists of a nucleus surrounded by the perinuclear cytoplasm and two types of processes, several dendrites, and a single axon, Fig 9.2. Cell bodies may be of different sizes and shapes, but in the CNS, most tend to be polygonal shaped, whereas cell bodies of the sensory ganglia are spherical. The cell body houses the nucleus, as well as various organelles, the most prominent of which are the rough endoplasmic reticulum, rare, NIS low body of light microscopy, the large perinuclear colgi apparatus, abundant mitochondria, and a well-developed system of microtubules, microfilaments, and neurofilaments. The microtubules sport microtubule-associated protein 2, MAP2. The soma also houses inclusions such as lipofuscin, an agar-related substance believed to be the indigestible remnants of lysosomal degradation, melanin, a dark brown pigment that may be the remnant of the synthesis of certain neurotransmitters, example noradrenaline and dopamine, secretory granules, probably containing neurotransmitter substances, and lipid droplets. Dendrites, cell processes that receive stimuli originating from outside and inside the body, often form branches and may arborize to receive stimuli from multiple sources at the same time, which they transmit as an impulse toward the cell body. Neurons usually have several dendrites, each of which possesses organelles, but not Golgi, in their proximal regions. These processes are usually broader near the soma, but begin to taper at a distance. The neurofilaments of dendrites usually contact microtubules, which have MAP2 associated proteins. As dendrites branch, they form numerous synapses and the dendrites of some neurons form small bulges, or spines, on their surface that provide larger surface areas for synapse formation. The cell body of a neuron possesses only a single axon that arises from a specialized region on the cell body called the axon hillock. An axon may extend long distances to provide motor supply to muscles and glands. The axon diameter varies and is related to the conduction velocity, i.e., as axon diameter increases, conduction velocity increases. The diameter is specific for the type of neuron, however. Although there is only one axon, it may give off branches at right angles, known as collateral axons, and as it approximates its target, it may arborize. Axons end in axon terminals, end bulbs, end foot, terminal boutons, where they form synaptic junctions, synapses, with other cells. The axon hillock is a specialized region of the cell body that occupies the opposite side of the cell body from where dendrites originate. The cytoplasm within the region of the axon hillock is devoid of rare, colgi, ribosomes, and this low bodies but is rich in microtubules and neurofilaments perhaps regulating axon diameter. On exiting the cell body, the axon's initial segment is without myelin and is termed the spike trigger zone where excitatory and inhibitory impulses are summed and evaluated to decide whether or not the impulse is to be transmitted. Because the axoplasm, cytoplasm within the axon, is devoid of rare and polyribosomes, its maintenance is provided by the cell body. The axoplasm does possess, however, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, SER, abundant elongated mitochondria, microtubules with their associated protein MAP3, and neurofilaments at the distal end. Oligodendroglia in the CNS and Schwann cells in the PNs form a myelin sheath, white in color, that surrounds some axons. The CNS is divided into white matter, where most of the axons are myelinated, and gray matter, where most axons are not myelinated. Materials within the axoplasm and the cell body are ferried by a process called axonal transport, which occurs in two directions, anterograde transport conveys materials such as organelles, vesicles, actin, myosin, clathrin, and enzymes required for the synthesis of neurotransmitters in the axon terminal, toward the end foot. The axon uses the motor protein kinesin for anterograde transport. Retrograde transport conveys material, such as tubulin monomers and dimers, neurofilament subunits, enzymes, viruses, and molecules to be degraded, to the soma. The axon uses the motor protein dynein for retrograde transport. Neuron classification, 
the three categories of neurons are based on their morphology and the organization of their processes, FIG 9.3 unipolar neurons, pseudo-unipolar neurons, are located in the dorsal root ganglion and some ganglia of the cranial nerves. They possess only one process, however, that single process bifurcates into a peripheral branch that continues until it reaches the site it services and a central branch that gains entry to the CNS. The peripheral branch arborizes with receptor endings similar to a dendrite, and it functions as a receptor. The impulse passes to the central process, but bypasses the cell body. Bipolar neurons are found in the olfactory epithelium and in the ganglia of the vestibulocochlear nerve. They possess two processes a dendrite and an axon. Multipolar neurons are ubiquitous, are generally motoneurons, and are located in the spinal cord and in the cerebral and cerebellar cord ices. They possess several dendrites and one axon. There are also three categories of neurons based on their function, sensory, afferent, neurons are stimulated at their dendritic receptors at the periphery where they respond to external environmental stimuli, and from within the body where they respond to internal environmental stimuli and transmit the information to the CNS for processing. Motor, efferent, neurons originate in the CNS and transmit their impulses to other neurons, muscles, and glands. Interneurons, present solely within the CNS, function as intermediaries between sensory neurons and motoneurons, they establish and integrate the activities of neuronal circuits. Neuroglial cells, neuroglial cells, Fig 9.4, are at least 10 times more abundant than neurons, and although they cannot transmit nerve impulses, they have the essential function of providing support and protection for the neurons whose soma, dendrites, and axons they envelop. In contrast to neurons, neuroglial cells can undergo cell division. Neuroglial cells that function within the CNS include oligodendrocytes, microglia, astrocytes, and ependymal cells. Schwann cells are neuroglia cells in the PNs. Oligodendrocytes are of two types. Interfascicular oligodendrocytes produce myelin, insulating axons of the CNS. A single oligodendrocyte may wrap several axons together in myelin. Satellite oligodendrocytes surround the soma of large neurons and probably function to insulate them from unwanted contact. Microglial cells are small cells that originate in the bone marrow and serve as macrophages, belonging to the mononuclear phagocyte system. They reside in the CNS where they phagocytose debris and damaged cells and mount protection against viruses, microorganisms, and tumors. Additionally, they serve as antigen-presenting cells and secrete cytokines. There are two types of astrocytes protoplasmic astrocytes located in the gray matter of the CNS and fibrous astrocytes located in the white matter. It has been proposed, however, that there is only a single type of astrocyte, and the presence of astrocytes in two different locations is responsible for their dissimilar characteristics. Both types of astrocytes possess intermediate filaments whose unique glial fibrillar acidic protein is a distinguishing characteristic of these cells. Astrocytes scavenge accumulated products, including ions and neurotransmitters and their metabolic remnants in their immediate area. Additional functions of astrocytes include repairing damage in the CNS, where they form scar tissue composed solely of cells, releasing glucose to nourish neurons of the cerebral cortex, and participating with the endothelial cells of blood vessels in the formation of the blood-brain barrier, BBB. Protoplasmic astrocytes possess petty cells, vascular feet, contacting blood vessels. Others located adjacent to the pia of the brain or spinal cord possess petty cles that touch each other to form a thin layer that contact the pia mater, establishing the pia glial membrane. Fibrous astrocytes possess long processes that associate with blood vessels and pia mater, but contact is prevented by their basal lamina. Neuroglial cells, cont ependymal cells are cuboidal cells that line the ventricles of the brain and the central canal of the spinal cord. They also contribute to the formation of the choroid plexus, the structure responsible for the production of the cerebrospinal fluid, CSF. Certain ependymal cells are ciliated, assisting in circulating the CSF, and others, known as tanny sits, 
have been implicated in the transfer of CSF to neurosecretory cells of the hypothalamus. Schwann cells arise from neural crest cells, and although they are considered neuroglial cells, they are located exclusively in the PNs, Fig 9.5. Similar to oligodendrocytes, Schwann cells form a myelinated or unmyelinated sheath around axons, insulating them, however, in contrast to oligodendroglia, a single Schwann cell can myelinate only a single axon, however, several unmyelinated axons can be ensheathed by a single Schwann cell. The myelin sheath is the plasma lemma of the Schwann cell that is wrapped around the axon as many as 50 times thousands of Schwann cells line up side by side, and each wraps its plasma membrane around a small length of the axon. The region of the axon wrapped by one Schwann cell is known as the internodal segment. The region between two adjoining internodal segments lacks myelin and is referred to as the node of Ranvier. Because each Schwann cell has its own basal lamina, the axon at the node of Ranvier is covered by interdigitations of the Schwann cell processes and by the Schwann cell's basal lamina, thus, the axon is not exposed directly to its surrounding environment. Oligodendroglia do not form processes at the nodes of Ranvier, instead, the region of the node is occupied by the process of an astrocyte. Fig 9.6 Although the axons of many neurons are myelinated in adults, not all axons are myelinated at the same time during development. Sensory nerves are not myelinated completely until several months after birth, whereas motor axons are almost completely myelinated at birth. In the CNS, the axons of some of the fiber tracts are not myelinated for the first few years of life. Myelination is a complex and as yet incompletely understood process. The Schwann cell, or oligodendroglion in the CNS, membrane wraps around the axon, and during the wrapping process the cytoplasm is squeezed back into the cell body. The inner aspect of the plasma lemma comes very close to the inner aspect of the plasma lemma, and the outer aspect comes very close to the outer aspect, and this relationship is repeated with each turn of the wrapping. Viewed with the electron microscope, the spiraling membrane presents a wider, darker line the major dense line that indicates the contact between the two cytoplasmic aspects of the Schwann cell plasma membrane. The contact between the outer surfaces of the plasma membrane is noted as a thinner, intraperiod line. The major dense line and the intraperiod line alternate with one another. At very high resolution, a narrow gap is visible within the intraperiod line, known as the intraperiod gap, this is a very narrow extracellular space that permits communication between the axon and the milieu outside the myelin sheath. Naturally, only small ions are capable of traversing the intraperiod gap. Certain regions of the myelin sheath have residual cytoplasm, and they appear as bulb-like areas known as schmidt lantermann incisors The Schwann cell membrane that forms the myelin sheath is rich in glycoproteins and sphingomyelin and two essential protein components, myelin protein 0, MPZ, and myelin basic protein, MBP. MPZ not only facilitates the process of myelin formation, but also assists in stabilizing the myelin sheath. MBP is also believed to help in maintaining the stability of the myelin sheath. MPZ is not present in myelin of the CNS, instead, another protein, proteolipid protein, PLP, assumes its functions the external aspects of the cell membranes, intraperiod lines, are held to each other by tight junctions that not only contain the usual proteins, clodins and zonula occludens proteins, but also contain connexin 32, CX32. The region of the myelin sheath where the myelin wrapping ends farthest from the axolemma, axon membrane, is the external mesoxin. The region of the myelin sheath where the myelin wrapping ends closest to the axolemma is the internal mesoxin. The intraperiod gap extends from the external to the internal mesoxin. Multiple sclerosis, multiple sclerosis, a disease of demyelination within the CNS, is common. Individuals 15 to 45 years old are affected, and it is approximately 1.5 times more common in females. Regions of the CNS that are demyelinated include the cerebellum, white matter of the cerebrum, spinal cord, and cranial and spinal nerves. 
there are periods of multifocal inflammation accompanied by edema with demyelination of CNS axons. Each episode may lead to severe deterioration or malignancy or both within the affected nerves, and depending on areas affected, death may result within months. These attacks are followed by remissions lasting several months or decades. Each episode causes the patient to lose vitality. Multiple sclerosis is believed to be an inflammatory autoimmune disease resulting from the presence of an infectious agent. Immunosuppressants combined with corticosteroids and anti-inflammatory treatment are the therapies of choice. Radiation therapy involving the brain or spinal cord can lead to demyelination of the nerves in the pathway of the radiation beam. Also, the toxic substances used in chemotherapy can lead to demyelination of axons of the nervous system that may cause neurologic problems. Guillabar syndrome is an immune disorder resulting from recent respiratory or gastrointestinal infection. It produces inflammation and demyelination of peripheral nerves causing muscle weakness in the extremities. The onset is early and peaks within a few weeks. Early diagnosis with autoimmune globulin treatments and physical therapy are usually recommended generation and conduction, the membranes of all cells are polarized electrically in such a fashion that the inner aspect of the membrane is less positive than the outer aspect because of the differential in ion concentrations, namely concentration of Na** and Cl ions is greater outside the cell than inside, and the concentration of K ions is higher inside than outside the cell. This characteristic of cell membranes is accentuated in mammalian nerve cells, where the resting potential is 90 MV in large neurons, although it is less negative in smaller neurons and muscle fibers, FIGS 9.7 and 9.8. Neurons communicate by modulating the membrane potential by depolarizing and repolarizing the membrane, and in this fashion a wave of depolarization spreads along the processes of the neuron and is transmitted to another neuron, muscle cell, or the cell of a gland across a specialized junction known as the synapse. The axon plasma membrane possesses at least the following three ion channels and a NAK pump, K** leak channels, which permit K** to exit the cell along a gradient of potassium concentration resulting in a buildup of positive charges along the external aspect of the cell membrane. The K** leak channel establishes the resting membrane potential, although it is assisted in this to a very limited extent by NAK** pumps. NAK pumps in the cell membrane, which pump 3 Na** ions out for every 2 K** ions it pumps into the cell. Voltage-gated Na channels, which, if they are open, permit Na ions to enter the cell. These channels open if the membrane is depolarized, but the open state is unstable, and the channel becomes inactivated, i.e., it closes and cannot be opened again until the membrane is repolarized to its resting potential. This capability of this particular ion channel is due to its having two gates, one a gate on its extracytoplasmic surface, the activation gate. Two a second gate on its cytoplasmic surface, the inactivation gate. Although the activation gate remains open because of the voltage change, the inactivation gate closes, and Na cannot pass through the ion channel, and the ion channel is said to be in its refractory period. Voltage-gated Na channels can be closed, activation gate closed, inactivation gate open, open, activation gate open, inactivation gate open, or inactivated, refractory period activation gate open, inactivation gate closed. Voltage-gated K channels, which open but do so slowly when the membrane is depolarized, permitting an efflux of K ions out of the neuron. These channels close when the membrane is repolarized. Usually a neuron is stimulated at the axon spike trigger zone. When this occurs, the membrane potential alters at that particular point, and the following sequence of events occurs, voltage-gated Na channels open at the spike trigger zone, Na ions enter the axon, and the preponderance of positive Na ions at the internal aspect of the membrane reverses the membrane potential, and the membrane becomes depolarized. The voltage-gated Na channels that opened at that point become inactivated for about 2 millisecond. The voltage-gated K channels open, K** ions leave the axon at the spike trigger zone, 
and the region of the spike trigger zone is repolarized and even hyperpolarized for a fraction of a millisecond, Fig 9.9. Many of the Na asterisk ions that entered the axon in step 1 flow in both directions and would cause depolarization of the adjacent regions of the axon. This wave of depolarization would spread in both directions toward the soma and away from the soma, however, the voltage-gated Na channels toward the soma are in their refractory period and cannot open. Propagation of the impulse, wave of depolarization, cannot proceed in the direction of the soma, retrograde propagation, However, it can and does propagate away from the soma, toward the ASIN terminals. The membrane voltage changes just described are known as an action potential, this is an all or none process that can occur 1000 times every second. Synapses, synapses, specialized junctions where nerve cells communicate with other nerve cells or with effector cells, i.e., muscle cells, or cells of glands, are of two types electric and chemical. The former are gap junctions, but rarely occur in mammals with the exception of some regions in the CNS. The latter involve the release of a neurotransmitter substance into a specially adapted intercellular space known as a synaptic cleft, located between the plasma lemma of the end foot of an axon, the presynaptic membrane, and a specialized region of the cell membrane, the postsynaptic membrane, of another neuron, muscle cell, or cell of a gland. Various types of synapses between two neurons are listed in Table 9.1 and are illustrated in Figure 9.10. The neurotransmitter substance released at the presynaptic membrane binds to receptors on the postsynaptic membrane, resulting in the opening of receptor-associated ion channels, which in turn results in the movement of ions through the lumen of the channel. If the ion movement causes a large enough depolarization of the postsynaptic membrane so that an action potential commences, the stimulus is known as an excitatory postsynaptic potential, or hyperpolarization of the postsynaptic membrane so that an action potential does not commence, the stimulus is known as an inhibitory postsynaptic potential. The presynaptic terminus, the end foot, houses profiles of ser, mitochondria, and small, neurotransmitter containing vesicles known as synaptic vesicles, 40 to 60 gym in diameter. These synaptic vesicles are clustered near the presynaptic membrane at and near the regions known as active sites because it is at these locations that the vesicles fuse with the presynaptic membrane and release their contents into the synaptic cleft. Synaptic vesicles that are at the active site are ready to release their contents, whereas vesicles near the active site are held in reserve by the vesicles transmembrane protein synapsin I and synapsin II, which bind and immobilize the vesicles to actin filaments phosphorylation of these two proteins, which release the synaptic vesicles from their attachment to the actin filaments allowing them to move to the active site. Fusion of the synaptic vesicles at the active site with the presynaptic membrane is facilitated by the entry of CA ions into the end foot via voltage-gated CA channels that opened because the action potential reached the end foot plasma lemma presence of CA ions in the cytoplasm that permit transmembrane proteins of the synaptic vesicle and presynaptic membrane RAB3A, synaptotagmin, synaptobrevin, syntaxin, SNAP25, soluble enethylmalamide sensitive fusion protein attachment protein 25, and synaptophysin, to interact with each other to complete the fusion process and allow the release of the neurotransmitter substances into the synaptic cleft vesicle membrane that was added to the presynaptic membrane and is retrieved by endocytosis mediated by clathrin coat, a process facilitated by integral proteins vesicle code protein AP2 and synaptotagmin. The retrieved membrane is ferried to the SER to be recycled. The postsynaptic membrane, located across the synaptic gap from the presynaptic membrane, is thicker than the remaining membrane of the postsynaptic cell and houses receptors for the neurotransmitter released at the active site of the presynaptic neuron end foot. The thickness of the postsynaptic membrane is usually indicative of its response to the neurotransmitter released. The bacterium Clostridium botulinum releases botulinum toxin, a neurotoxin that is exceptionally lethal in very small quantities, LD for intravenous administration is approximately 1 ng slash kg. Although the toxin is heat sensitive and is denatured at 140 degrees Fahrenheit, 
the bacterial spores remain viable and germinate under anaerobic conditions. The vegetative microorganisms release the toxin and usually, in improperly handled food or damaged canned food, the bacteria thrive. The toxin is a protease that specifically cleaves one of the fusion proteins, SNAP25, syntaxin, or synaptobrevin, at myoneural junctions. The presence of cleaved fusion proteins prevents the fusion of synaptic vesicles with the presynaptic membrane and thwarts the release of acetylcholine, resulting in flaccid paralysis of the affected muscles. Death is usually due to the paralysis of the muscles of respiration, but the toxin takes effect over several days, and if recognized early enough death can be averted by artificial ventilation and the administration of available botulinum antitoxins. Neurotransmitters, signaling molecules Neurotransmitters contact receptors on their target cells to initiate a specific response. Receptors are, fast acting, the process takes al millisecond, because they are coupled with ion channels, and the signaling molecules, first messenger system, activating them are known as neurotransmitters slow acting, the process can take several minutes, because they are coupled with G proteins, and the signaling molecules, activating a second messenger system, are known as neuromodulators or neurohormones the more than 100 neurotransmitters slash neurohormones may be categorized into three groups, table 9.2 small molecule transmitters, acetylcholine, amino acids, biogenic amines, neuropeptides, opioid peptides, gastrointestinal peptides, hypothalamic releasing hormones, hormones stored in the neurohypophysis, gases, nitric oxide and carbon monoxide, neurotransmitters may elicit different responses under different conditions, and the configuration of the postsynaptic receptor may dictate the effect of the neurotransmitter on the postsynaptic cell. Interneuronal synaptic communication usually requires multiple neurotransmitters or volume transmission, especially between brain cells, where neurotransmitters are located in the intercellular fluid between brain cells, resulting in activation of groups of cells that possess the proper receptors as opposed to activation of a single cell. Volume transmission is slow acting and is thought to apply to alertness, autonomic function, sensitivity to pain, and moods. In contrast, synaptic communication is fast-acting. Peripheral nerves, peripheral nerves containing sensory and motor nerve fibers are bundled together by nerve investments that permit observation with the unaided eye. These bundles, known as fascicles, appear whitish because of the presence of myelin on many of those fibers. Connective tissue investments, three separate, distinct connective tissue investments surround the nerves within the fascicle, Fig 9.11 Epineurium, the outermost layer of the investments, completely surrounds the entire nerve and is continuous with the dura mater of the CNS. It is thickest at the origin of the nerve where it leaves the CNS, and becomes thinner as it gives off branches and eventually disappears. It is composed of dense, irregular collagenous connective tissue intermingled with thick elastic fibers. Collagen fibers of the sheath are organized in such a fashion as to prevent stretching. Perineurium, the middle layer of the connective tissue investments, surrounds individual nerve fascicles. It is composed of a thin, dense, irregular connective tissue with a few collagen fibers mixed with elastic fibers. The internal surface of the perineurium is lined by layers of epithelioid cells and a basal lamina separating the neuronal compartment from the connective tissue. Endoneurium, the innermost layer of the connective tissue investments, surrounds each nerve fiber individually. The endoneurium contacts Schwann cell basal lamina, isolating it from the perineurium and the Schwann cells. Near the terminus, it is only a few type 3 collagen fibers. Functional classification of nerves, nerves are composed of sensory or motor fibers or both. The former, known as afferent nerve fibers, convey nerve signals from sensory receptors to the CNS for processing. The latter, known as efferent nerve fibers, originate in the CNS and convey motor impulses to effector organs. Mixed nerves are the most common type, and they carry afferent nerve fibers, sensory fibers, and efferent nerve fibers, motor fibers. Huntington's chorea, Huntington's chorea, 
a hereditary disease, begins as painful joints, then flicking of the joints of the extremities. It progresses to flinging of the joints, including distortions accompanied by dementia and motor dysfunction. The onset of the disease is in the third and fourth decades. It is thought to be the result of the loss of the cells producing Y-aminobutyric acid, GABA, an inhibitory neurotransmitter. The dementia is thought to be related to loss of the cells secreting acetylcholine. Parkinson's disease, Parkinson's disease, the second most common neurodegenerative disease, is defined by resting tremor, slow voluntary movements, rigidity, and a mask-like face. The disease is due to the loss of dopaminergic neurons from the substantia nigra, resulting in the absence of dopamine in the brain. Several therapies have been developed and administered, but most provide only temporary relief without checking the death of dopaminergic neurons. Grafting of genetically modified cells to secrete dopamine that would establish new connections to certain cells in the brain where dopamine is needed is presently under study. One current therapy, deep brain stimulation, a pacemaker type of therapy, involves implanting electrodes in the thalamus and the globus pallidus, which reduces rigidity and tremors and increases balance.